悲しいほど光り出した白い闇切り裂く翼になれ。Whew, things have been pretty crazy here in the Japanese writing learning department. So many new characters. Wouldn't it be great if it just got a little easier from now on? Well, that's exactly what's about to happen. It's the truth. These are our last sets of kana coming up, only three videos worth. So, without further ado, let us begin. Before you is the hiragana ma. You make it by drawing two little horizontal lines of roughly the same length. Pretty easy. And then you make a straight line through them and end it with a curl over to the left that extends through to the right. Very simple. Now there's the katakana ma. Just be sure that you have the strokes correct, that you make a version of that stroke that I don't know how to explain. And you finish it with a rather conspicuous, pretty large dash. And that's all there is to the katakana ma. Then there's the hiragana mi, which might look pretty awesome, but it's really not too hard. You basically make a little seven to start off, make the end a little curly, and have it curling on itself, extending far over to the right. And then you make a little curve, almost like an ending parenthesis, through it. Then there's the katakana mi. I hope I don't have to explain this one. It's just one, two, three lines, horizontal to each other, parallel to each other. They don't have to be on a real slant like that, but they usually will be. It's just pretty normal. Then there's the hiragana mu, which is definitely the craziest that you're going to learn. Well, actually, almost. There's going to be a little dash right there, and then you're going to make a little cross. But if you remember what you did with Su, you're going to do the same thing to Mu, but you're going to return on itself and make a really large L shape right there. And then you're going to end with making a dash over to the right. Then there is the Katakana Mu, which you make that stroke. Like that, and then you're just going to make that little dash over to the right hand side. Just make sure that you keep it at two strokes and no more. Then comes the hiragana me. This shouldn't be that crazy because it looks pretty familiar, doesn't it? Because it's extremely similar to the hiragana nu. You make that little, that simple line right there, and then you make that. Completely ridiculous curve, but you don't end in a little curl. That is what distinguishes between nu and mu, a me rather, in hiragana, between the hiragana nu and the hiragana me. That little curl that would be on the right hand side. If you don't remember what the hiragana nu looks like, then go back to the video and look at it again. Here is the katakana me. A little, a little slant slash curve thing going from the upper right to the lower left, and then you make it into a cool slanted cross sort of thing. And that's the katakana me. And our last sound is mo, the hiragana mo. You make two smaller horizontal lines like that, and then you make a nice fun curve, almost curving all the way in on itself, but not quite. The curve doesn't have to be quite that curly. It can end lower, but that's, that's the strokes right there. And then there is the katakana mole, which is basically just a straighter version. One straight line, a larger straight line beneath it, and then an L going through the two of them. And that is all there is to that. And so that is ma, mi, mu, me, mole. No tricks of the trade. And no changes in pronunciation, no little glitches or anything. This is a very simple, very easy going day. It's really not going to get any harder. But from now on, there are going to be slight changes to consonant sounds. Relatively slight. 
as opposed to how they're made in English. So just be a little prepared for that. That's the hardest it's going to get. This is Angel of Crepuscu, and signing off.